in the woods Okay, guys, what I thought I'd do real quick today is uh, just a little stump top review on the new Pathfinder Trade Knife by Habilis Bush Tools. Stay with me. We're going to take a look at her and see how she performs. Okay, guys, so I want to do a little stump top review with you guys today on this new Pathfinder Trade Knife by Habilis Bush Tools. It is a 1095 high carbon steel blade full tang. It's got a Scandivex type grind where it's got a Scandinavian type grind that has a little bit of a convex edge to it and that's to add stability to a thinner blade. This is a 1 8 inch thick steel blade. Um, the knife itself is designed very much in 18th century fashion. It looks like a roach belly trade knife from that era. It has a nice comfortable handle on it that comes in both this tiger orange and black for high visibility as well as a gunmetal gray and black made out of G10. Uh, the G10 handles are a little bit more stable as far as uh, protection from water and the elements than the Micarta is so we chose to go with the G10 material. Um, it has two holes drilled through it that are sleeved so that this thing can be attached as a spear point to a stick if you wanted to and the points very reminiscent of a spear point type implement. It also has a divot drilled into the handle here so that you can use it for a hand drill socket for primitive fire in an emergency. The blade is not coated, it's actually blued. That's why it's that blackish color, which gives it the ability to strike sparks very easily because there's no coating on there to stop it. It also has a 90 degree spine on it, which I like real well because that throws really good sparks as well. Let's grab a cheapy ferro rod over here real quick and we'll look at how it throws sparks off of just a $5 ferro rod. Okay, so this is just a cheapy ferro rod. Um, it's one off our site. We sell for about five bucks, probably one of the cheapest fire steels on the market. Let me zoom in on this thing for you guys. There we go. And we'll just set this thing down on the stump here and rub the knife across it. I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure on that, guys. So it's really good for use with your ferro rod and that stuff just wipes off your knife but it keeps you from having to use your blade and I see a lot of people make that mistake in my classes. It does have two logos on the blade. It has the Pathfinder logo as well as the Havilis Bush Tools logo that are embossed laser etched into the blade. So let's talk about while we're on the knife let's talk about the size of this knife. You know I pretty much profess that you need a knife that's at least five inches long um, this is not designed as a one tool option really. It was designed for carry with like a saw, an axe, or a hatchet, or some other implement. Uh, but it does have a five inch blade. And right here's my scale. You can see that's got a five inch blade on it overall length. I like that. The handle on it is about another four inches, making it nine inches overall or thereabouts. And you can see that it is a one eighth inch thick blade. Now the sheath that we sell with this knife is not an expensive leather sheath. Um, it's actually a very cheap leather sheath as far as price goes, very common man priced. But I have a sheath made by the same company. It is actually exactly like this um, that's been on a K-bar for about 10 or 12 years and I have yet to wear it out. Um, it is stitched down the side and it does have rivets in it as well. It's made out of a pretty good quality leather. You can see this one's been beat up pretty good. We do stain this sheath for you. We buy them in the raw and stain them before we send them to you with a knife. It fits in the sheath real well. I'm sure that a lot of people don't like this style of sheath. This is an old hunter style sheath from the 70s and things like that, but some of the newer leather bushcrafting sheaths would fit this really nice. Um, but we wanted to put a sheath with it that we could keep the price down on so that we could offer this at a common man price. And this is a U.S. made knife, made one at a time, not on a production line. And the selling price of this knife is 99 bucks with the sheath. So that's really a pretty good price and there's a lifetime guarantee on it. You can't hardly beat that for 99 bucks um, 
I'm really impressed with it. I like it really well. I already showed you how it throws sparks. Now let's look at uh, feather sticks with some grease wood real quick. Okay, so here's a piece of fat wood right here from a pine. And uh, so you're going to have a lot of resin in this wood. It's going to be very thick and gummy feeling. So we'll see how we do with this at making a feather stick. And again, we're cutting right down into the meat of that resin. And that's kind of tough to cut into. And these are short feathers really, but I am getting some pretty good curl to it. Some of them are chopping off because of all that resin in there. It's hard to get an easy cut on that thing but you can see got some pretty good curls on there and this thing it does just fine even with this resin you know I can cut pretty heavy chunks off of this wood if I want to if I were trying to manufacture some tinder I could do that pretty easy and again you're cutting through a lot of resin on this pine because it's just full of resin and it's still taking pretty nice little chunks off of there you can see those nice spiral chunks and those are real good fire starting material as well. You got open flame on that, you're in business. A lot of times if you get this stuff thin enough, you can even ignite this with a ferrocium rod. Okay, so let's talk about batoning with this thing. I mean, I would have no problems driving this thing right into the side of a stump. I'm not worried about it. You're not going to break that knife. All right? You're not going to hurt that thing. No question about it, okay? <clears throat> now let's talk about batoning. Let's take this old piece of hard pine plank right here. And this thing's been sitting out here for a while. Let's bust this thing down a couple times. All right. You can see that stuff's not dead by any means and dry. I mean, it's dead, but it's still got plenty of life in it. Plenty of grain we're cutting through. Beating on that tip really, really hard right now. Not even worried about it. Prying with it, no problem. Not even worried about it. If I had to process wood with this thing, I wouldn't have a second thought about doing it. There you go, guys. That's one tough knife for 100 bucks. I'd carry that every day, all day. Okay, guys, real quick, I want to show you a tip or trick in this video that you might appreciate. I like to at least put one tip or trick in all of my product review videos for you, just to give you just a little bonus for watching the video. What this is, this is tulip poplar bark, okay? And this tree is not completely dead yet. The bark didn't want to give up real easy. I kind of had to peel it off a little tougher than normal. You find good tulip poplar dead bark, you can almost shred the bark into a bird's nest. But with this, you can still use the inner bark. All you have to do is take your knife and kind of flatten this stuff out as best you can and scrape it. And you see what you get out of that when you do that. You get a bundle of real fine hairs. That looks like that, okay? That makes great bird nest material. 
for any kind of a bird nest, whether it's a magnifying glass or whether it is flint and steel or any kind of combustion up to and including a ferrocium rod. I mean, that stuff will light right off a ferrocium rod. Now, if you can't find a piece of flat bark, you know, just take your time and be patient with it. Every little bit counts. See if I can find something a little flatter here. This one looks pretty good. And just put your knife blade on it and scrape it. That's all I'm doing, scraping that along there. And that's not a very big piece of bark, but it gave me quite a good little pile of tinder there. As you can see, I've scraped a pretty nice little pile of tinder off right there. If I were using that in a bird nest for my ignition point to put my char cloth into or what have you, that would be a nice little addition. And this stuff's not hard to harvest. It doesn't take a lot of energy, really. You can see all I'm doing is scraping this bark to get fine hairs and dust off of it. This stuff's all bone dry. And I would save every little bit of that into a pile. Okay, so let's get our cheapy ferro rod back out here in our bush tool. There we go. Now that's real fine, so that's like center of bird nest material, like I said. But you can see that flamed right up. With just a ferrocium rod and the Pathfinder trade knife. That throws some real good heavy duty sparks without a lot of effort. Well guys, I appreciate you joining me today for this quick review of the new Pathfinder trade knife by Habilis Bush Tools. Um, I think it's a pretty good knife. Like I said, it's not meant to be a one tool option. It's meant to be your companion for your axe, for your saw, whatever the case may be, but it is a companion tool. Stays really nice and sharp. You can see we've done a whole lot of stuff with it today, including batoning before we did this, and we were still able to get, you know, fine enough shavings off the back of that inner bark to affect the fire with. I appreciate your views, guys. I appreciate your support. I appreciate the support that you give me, my family, and my store, my school. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.